What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the Mad Ballers YouTube channel and our Georgia State Panthers Dynasty and NCAA Football 14. Week 1 of the 2013 college football season is upon us and Georgia State will face off at home in the Georgia Dome against the FCS Southeast Pirates. Both of these teams are evenly matched so we should see a close game here today. The players are getting ready for the coin toss so let's go ahead and get week 1 started. Now let's send it out to Brad and Kirk for all the action. Hubbard will kick off for the Georgia State Panthers to get this game started. And back at the five yard line, Moore will return this kick up the middle, past the 20, past the 30, taken down at about the 32 yard line for a 27 yard return. First and 10 now for the Pirates. In the shotgun is Garth Fontaine. He will option this play up the middle and he is gonna get taken down, but not before getting nine and a half yards, setting up second and inches. On second down, Fontaine's in the shotgun again. Another option play. He goes up the middle, first down and more, and he is finally taken down at the 50-yard line, setting up first and 10. And Garth Fontaine has two QB rushes for 25 yards, and the Georgia State Panthers might want to think about setting up a QB spy. First and 10 now from midfield. Fontaine will hand off to Frank. Frank will go right side, and he will bulldoze a couple of Georgia State defenders before getting eight yards. Second and two now. Fontaine in the shotgun. He is going to fake the handoff, throw on the run, and Ryan Ward has that catch for the first down, a 19-yard reception deep in Georgia State Panther territory. As we look at the replay here, you can see he cut inside on the slant play, and Fontaine threw on the run, and that was a good catch for 19 yards setting up first and 10 for the FCS Pirates. Second and 10 now for the Pirates. Fontaine's in the shotgun. He will fake the handoff read option again, but he is taken down in the backfield for a four yard loss by Nate Anthony. This would set up third and 14. Fontaine out of the shotgun. He will look to pass, fire deep to the end zone. This one is dropped, should have been intercepted, but we will take that one. That sets up fourth and 14 for the Pirates. They would attempt a 37-yard field goal here. The kick is up, and it is wide right. That one is missed, and we take over at the 20. Ben McLean under center. He will drop back to pass. Fire on the comeback route to Albert Wilson for 10 yards. That'll set up second and inches on second down. Ben Wilson under center. He will hand off to Gerald House up the middle for three yards and the first down, and the drive would continue for the Georgia State Panthers. First and 10 now for the Panthers. McLean under center. He'll drop back to pass, and he will get hit before he gets the ball out there. And that would set up second and 10 on the next play. McLean under center. He is going to hand off to House up the middle, and House is going to get five yards on that rushing play up the middle, setting up third and five. On third and five, McLean comes to the line under center, drops back to pass, and he gets that ball away just before he is hit. That sets up fourth and five, and the Panthers would punt. The Pirates take over at the 30-yard line, and a pass to Andrew Clark there for 17 yards and a first down. As we look at the replay here, you can see he barely got in bounds here on this pass play. Coach Chip Nolan almost thought about challenging this play, but decided against it. That sets up a first and ten. Second and eight now on this drive for the Pirates. Fontaine out of the shotgun. He'll look to pass. He'll fire for Frank, and Frank has the catch and the first down as he stiff arms a Panthers defender down to the 34-yard line. Second and 10 now. Fontaine back to pass again. He's going to hit Andrew Clark again, and Clark looks like he is one yard short as he goes out of bounds there, but they say he got the first down. Second and seven now, Fontaine back to pass over the middle to Andrew Clark again, and he has the first down inside the 10-yard line, setting up first and goal for the Pirates. On first and goal, Fontaine is under center. He is going to hand off to Frank. Frank is going to go up the middle, left side, down at the one-yard line, setting up second and goal. On the next play, Mason's in motion. A pitch to Mason. Mason is going to try to get in the end zone, and he is taken down at the half-yard line there, setting up third and goal. 
on that third and goal. Fontaine back to pass. He is going to get sacked on the play for a loss, but there's a flag on the play as well. This one's going to be offsides against the Panthers, and that would lead to another third down and goal opportunity for the Pirates. And Fontaine would hand off to Frank, and Frank goes left in into the end zone for the touchdown, and Tyreek Frank has the first points of the day against the Panthers, putting FCS Southeast up 7 to nothing, and that is how the first quarter would end. After a Panthers three and out, the Pirates come out in the second quarter. Fontaine under center. He'll fake the pitch. Throw caught by Barber, and Barber is met in the backfield for a one-yard loss. Third and six now in this drive. Fontaine in the shotgun. He'll fire quickly. Tyler has that catch for a first down. Chris Tyler, an eight-yard reception, sets up first and ten for the Pirates. On first down, Fontaine. Under center, hands off to Marcus Mason, right side, up the middle for nine yards, setting up second and one for the Pirates. On the next play, Fontaine in the shotgun. He'll take the snap. He will keep it himself up the middle for the first down, down at the 41-yard line, first and ten Pirates. Later in the drive at second and nine, Fontaine takes the snap, drops back. He is going to get sacked on the play for a six-yard loss by Brian Williams. His first sack of the game as so we take a look at the replay here. The linebacker came in untouched and sacked Fontaine for a six-yard loss. Third and 14 now for the Pirates. Fontaine's in the shotgun. He'll take the snap, drop back, fire over the middle, caught by Tyler. But Tyler is met two yards short of the first down. That would set up fourth and two. And a 50-yard field goal attempt by the Pirates. They missed their first field goal attempt. And this one is no different. Wide, right, and short. And the Georgia State Panthers take over at the 33-yard line. McLean hands off to House. House goes left side for three yards. Second and seven now. McLean under center. He will fake the handoff. He is going to scramble out right. Fire on the run, and that one is incomplete off the mark. Third and seven now for the Panthers. McLean under center. He'll drop back. He'll fire, and that one's caught by Albert Wilson. A.W. has that catch for a first down. 24-yard reception on that one. And that sets up first and ten. In Pirate territory, McLean back to pass now. He's going to fire deep, and that one is broken up, intended for A.W., and the Pirates knock that one away. Third and nine now for the Panthers. McLean under center. He'll drop back to pass. He'll fire. This one is broken up by the Pirates defender, almost picked off, setting up fourth and nine, and the Panthers decide to go for it. They're in that middle ground where a punt really doesn't help them and they really need to go for it, and that is a mistake. Sands picks that one off by McLean, and he is taken down at the 36-yard line as we take a look at the replay here. Sands just was eyeballing the quarterback and read his every move and picked that one off and returned it up to the 36-yard line, and the Pirates would end up going three and out. Late in the second quarter now, the Panthers have another chance. McLean back to pass, and he is going to get sacked on the play for a 10-yard loss. Setting up second and 20 with under 20 seconds to go. McLean in the shotgun. He's going to fire deep, and this one's caught by Albert Wilson. A.W. has that catch in Pirates territory. And on first and 10 with nine seconds left, McLean in the shotgun. He'll drop back to pass. He'll fire over the middle. Caught by Keaton Hill, and Hill has the first down, and the Panthers take a timeout. One second to go, second and 10. The Panthers will fake a field goal here, and Bell will fire incomplete, and that is how the first half will end. The FCS Southeast Pirates ahead 7-0 over the Georgia State Panthers. Glad to have you with us in the studio for the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 Halftime Show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. Reese Davis and David Pollock here, completely locked in on that first half. I'm a fan of seeing guys, one step rep, two step squeeze, bring your feet, arrive with bad intentions. Ah. Uh, I don't want to take anything away from these defensive guys, David, but could this be that we're seeing a healthy dose of some pretty bad offense, too? I, it goes hand in hand, doesn't it, Reese? I mean, well, sometimes. usually, sometimes, uh, you know, pretty good defense makes, you know, average offenses look really, really bad, but. 
you know, when you have a great defense and you can take something away, especially the strength of the other offense, and make them do things that they don't do exceptionally well, and you know, don't let them throw the fastball, make them throw the curve. And you see great defenses be able to do that all the time, and and that's when you can be ultra successful. You have to find ways to make people play, you know, the game out of their comfort zone. Just about time to get you back out for the second half. Brad and Kirk will be along in just a second. You're looking forward to keeping an eye on everything around the country here. Got a good. A lot of good games going. We're locked and loaded. We got all the big screens going. You're gonna be looking to hand out some helmet stickers later. Yeah. We're loaded, man. I'll try. You think you can keep on your shoes in the second half? I'll try to. They stinky? Yes. Brad and Kirk, you're at a safe distance. Take it away. Georgia State will return the second half kickoff, trying to get something started in the second half to get this game tied at seven. And Keaton Hill will be back to return this one, and he will run this one up to about the 24-yard line. First and 10, Ben McLean comes out again. He will fire quickly to Danny Williams for six yards. That'll set up second and four. Next play, McLean under center. He'll drop back to pass, and he will fire to Danny Williams on the comeback route, and he will have the first down at the 40-yard line. First and 10, Georgia State Panthers. Second and seven now on this drive. McLean back to pass again. He will scramble and get sacked for a 12-yard loss. Setting up third and 19, and on that long third down, McLean out of the shotgun. He'll drop back to pass. He will fire, and that one is to Pearson, and Pearson has that catch. A 22-yard reception by Drew Pearson gives the Georgia State Panthers a first down in Pirates territory. On first down, McLean will try to pitch this one to House, and that one is fumble and picked up by one of our offensive linemen. Second and 11 now. McLean fakes the handoff, passes quickly to Drew Pearson for five-yard reception, setting up third and short. On third down, McLean under center, dropping back to pass, firing quickly to Albert Wilson, and Wilson will break one tackle and get taken down at about the 22-yard line. First and 10, Panthers. On that first down, McLean under center. He will hand off to House. House will go left side and get five yards. Gerald House gets five yards in that rushing play. Third and six now for the Panthers. McLean under center. He will drop back. Fire to Albert Wilson. Wilson has seven yards on that pass play, giving the Panthers a first down at about the 10-yard line. First and 10. McLean back to pass. He's going to fire to the end zone, and that one is dropped by Albert Wilson. It looked like he had that one in his grips, but it was punched out by the defender. Third and seven now, McLean in the shotgun. He will fake the handoff, drop back to pass. Fire to the end zone for Albert Wilson, and Clark is going to pick that one off and down it in the end zone, and the FCS Southeast Pirates will take over at the 20. Handoff to Ty Tyreek Frank now, and he is going to be met in the backfield for a four-yard loss, setting up second and 14. On second down, Fontaine is in the... Shotgun drops back to pass, fires for Frank, and Frank is taken down at the line of scrimmage. But wait, a flag has come in, and they are going to call face mask, personal foul against the Panthers, and that will give them a 15-yard penalty, and that would give the Pirates a first down. Second and 10 now on this drive for the Pirates. Fontaine back to pass. He will fire deep, and this one will be caught by Moore. Our defender just overrun the play there, and that was a 45-yard reception. Fontaine back to pass now on third and 10. He will get sacked on this play for a seven yard loss, setting up fourth and 17. And that is how the third quarter would end the FCS Southeast Pirates on top, seven to nothing over the Georgia State Panthers. The fourth quarter starts with the Pirates attempting a long field goal. They've already missed two in this game. The kick is up and it is missed wide right and now they have missed three field goals so far this game. The Georgia State Panthers take over McLean back to pass and he is going to get sacked in the play for an 11 yard loss and they need to find a way to protect their quarterback to keep him upright so he can make some passes and complete some passes as you look at the replay here. Three or four defenders came in untouched almost and sacked McLean for an 11-yard loss. And we would move to third and 21 now for the Panthers. McLean in the shotgun. He dropped back to pass. He'll fire a bullet to Albert Wilson. And Wilson has that catch at the first down mark. 21-yard reception by Albert Wilson. And a first down for the Georgia State Panthers as you look at the replay there. And this drive continues for the Panthers. And their hopes of tying this game stay alive as well. 
First and 10 now, McLean out of the shotgun. Drops back to pass, fires the house on the screenplay, but that will gain no yards. Met at the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 now, McLean in the shotgun again. He'll take the snap, drop back to pass, fire and overthrow his receiver. And that sets up third and 10 for the Georgia State Panthers. As they come to the line, McLean in the shotgun again. He will drop back to pass, fire on the comeback route to Albert Wilson, pass midfield for the first down. And that keeps the drive alive for the Georgia State Panthers. McLean in the shotgun now on first and 10. He drops back to pass, he fires, and this one's caught by Drew Pearson, and he has the first down, a 13-yard reception by Drew Pearson. Second and eight now for the Georgia State Panthers. McLean's gonna fake the handoff and get sacked for a six-yard loss, setting up third and 13 on that third down. McLean in the shotgun, he'll take the snap, drop back to pass, fire to Albert Wilson on the comeback route again, and he's taken down, and there's a flag on the play. He already had the first down, but tack on top of that, 15 yards for that face mask penalty on the defense, and the Georgia State Panthers had the ball at the 11-yard line. First and 10, McLean out of the shotgun, fires quickly to Danny Williams, and Williams has that reception for four yards, and it's second and six as you look at the replay here, second and six, from the seven yard line and the Georgia State Panthers are in business here. Second and six, McLean in the shotgun. He'll take the snap, drop back. He's gonna fire for the end zone and that one is deflected by Everton Richardson. Should have been picked off probably, but that's gonna set up third and six. McLean out of the shotgun again. He'll drop back to pass. He's gonna fire to Albert Wilson who is double covered. Could have been picked off. Thought he could have made the catch though as he's stepped up big in this game. Fourth and six, they come out to go for it as they need to. McLean back to pass, he'll fire over the middle to Danny Williams. He has the first down and the end zone for the touchdown. And the Georgia State Panthers are on the board with six points down by one point, waiting for the extra point. As you see the replay here, Danny Williams came over the middle and got that reception and got in the end zone. They would add the extra point. The Pirates will come out on their next possession here with just over two minutes to go. Fontaine back to pass. He will throw deep. His receiver's double covered, and Ransby will intercept that one. He's going to return this one to about the 46-yard line, and we'll take a look at the replay here as Fontaine should have never thrown this ball here. His receiver was double covered, and it was picked off by Ransby. A good time for an interception for the Georgia State Panthers and a good return into Pirates territory. So, Ronnie Bell will come out to run the offense now. He will take off on the read option play up the middle for two yards, setting up second and eight. Third and eight now, and Ben McLean is in, back into the game. He's in the shotgun. He drops back to pass. He's fighting for Albert Wilson, but that one's picked off by Callahan, and Callahan will return this one to about the 43-yard line, and their coach likes that one as they get another shot here with just under two minutes to go to win this game. Fontaine back to pass out of the shotgun over the middle. Reception by Clark there. He has the first down and more into Panther territory. Andrew Clark, a 15-yard reception. First and 10 now for the Pirates. Fontaine back to pass. He'll fire over the middle to Andrew Clark again for about 10 yards, setting up second and inches. On second and inches, we need a stop here. Fontaine back to pass, and that one is going to be a sack, an eight-yard loss, and that sets up third and nine. Fontaine in the shotgun on third and nine now. He's back to pass. He will dump off to Tyreek Frank on the screen play, and he's taken down before the first down marker. But wait, there's a flag on the play, and they're going to call roughing the passer on the Georgia State Panthers, and that's going to be a 15-yard penalty and a first down, and Chip Nolan is really upset with the refs and his team on that call. First and 10 now, hand off to Frank, left side. He's going to get about five yards on that rushing play, setting up second and five. They'll hurry up to the line with 17 seconds left. Hand off to Frank, up the middle. He will cut back to the right. First down and down at the 10 and a half yard line. First and 10 for the Pirates. They will look to just center this ball here on first and 10. Hand off to Frank, up the middle, cuts back left, cuts again and in the end zone for a touchdown. And the FCS Southeast Pirates are now ahead 14 to 7 over Georgia State. They will come out and kick this one off. One last chance for the Panthers. Keaton Hill back to return this one. He's up past the 20, cuts it outside. He has one guy to beat, and he is taken down at the 31-yard line. So with five seconds left, Ben McLean comes out. 
He is in the shotgun, drops back to pass. He's going to fire deep here, and this one is going to be caught by Albert Wilson, but time runs out, and that will be the game. The FCS Southeast Pirates will take this game over the Panthers. Tyreek Frank is your player of the game, and the Panthers go to the locker room wondering what they could have done better in this one. A final score of 14-7. to The FCS Southeast Pirates beat the Georgia State Panthers on their home field. Taking a look at the stats from the game now, it looks like rushing yards and turnovers were the problem for the Georgia State Panthers today. Negative 11 rushing yards and three turnovers on the day. And now we'll take a look at the players of the game from both sides. Albert Wilson had 10 receptions and 185 yards, both of those school records. And Jamal Ransby had three tackles and one tackle for a loss and an interception. Head coach Chip Nolan is now a level two head coach, and we have an upgrade available to us now, so we'll go ahead and upgrade the scouting so we can get 50% of the scouting done for a recruit for only 50 points that's going to help us out. And we'll go ahead into recruiting here, and I'm not sure how I'm going to show the recruiting exactly, but I think what I'm going to do is once we narrow it down more to who we're going to get on this team as far as recruits, I will spotlight those more as far as like visits, scholarships, and things like that. So one thing I did find out though that is really helpful is to sort these recruits by how far behind you are so those players will be at the top of your board. So if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and stay tuned for the next video in this series where we'll face off at home against FCS East. Until then, we'll catch you guys in the next episode.